Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those that are new, my name is Sandra and I have my own interior design business here in Illinois and today we're going to be addressing some FAQs I had posted on my Instagram for you guys to send me any questions you may have about interior design, business, whatever it is. So I'm going to address it all in this video. So let's get started. First question is, do you ever find yourself in a creative drought? And if so, how do you deal with that? Especially being on your own now. Yeah, I do find it tough, especially because I don't really have a team or a partner to like bounce off ideas. Um, so there, here's like a few things that I found have worked for me. Um, one is Pinterest. Uh, the other is I step away from my computer and the third is if I'm really stuck on an idea or I'm trying to make something work really bad, I sometimes decide to scratch it out and start over again. Um, so to, to explain it a little bit more, Pinterest, I like to go on there to see if there's like a design or a style that's already been done before and if so, I like to do it a little bit different or I'll, I'll take like little little things here and there to combine one design that's custom to my clients. Um, another, another thing that I do is I make a list. I, I visually make a list of all the things that my clients like, all the positives. Um, so when I'm stuck on how to do something, I'll look back at that list and be like, okay, so they like this. How can I incorporate this differently into this design space? Um, or the other thing is like, I step away from my computer. Sometimes we don't have that time to step away from our computer, but uh, when I don't have the time to do that, I'll work on something else. I'll work on another space or another project, and then I'll work on it the next day or maybe like a few hours later. The other thing I found is a lot of times I find myself trying to make a very specific piece or a very specific style like I try to make it work and it's just not fitting in there well like I'm sure some of you guys have felt this before like you really want to work this beautiful tile or this beautiful statement furniture piece but it's just not working in the design and it you're wasting so much time trying all these ways um, and I actually learned this from Karen Bond's latest podcast ep episode when she interviews Danielle and she was talking about how when her, one of our team um, designers or something or, or some of our team gets stuck on an idea and they're trying to make it work so so bad, sometimes it's best to scratch it out and start completely fresh. And that really resonated with me because I, I find myself trying to make something work so bad and I'm wasting so much time that sometimes I'm sometimes I think I'm like maybe I should start over and it's been a few times I've done that and it actually works better because I'm like oh why didn't I think about it this way so when you're so stuck in trying to fix something you don't think of like anything else that you're or the other po possibilities that they are so those are like the main things that I do when I'm like I'm stuck or I just I'm in this drought, I can't think of any ideas, like I look at all the positives, I take a break, I look on Pinterest, or I just start fresh. How did you make your website? Share the process. Okay, so I use Wix for my website, and honestly the process took me a long time, um, and that's because I'm not a web designer, I'm an interior designer for a reason, and the other thing is, it took me a long time to get my website up and running because one, I was trying to determine what is my vision, how do I want to lay my website out, um, how do I want to share my story, uh, just like there's so many things to a website that that's why it took me so long um, and there's so many things to think of. The first round of my website, I just, I did not like it, I just felt like it was a bit amateur. And then the second round, what I have currently, it took me a really long time to get there. I mean, I still like how my website looks, but I feel like it could be better. Um, so personally, I would recommend maybe you hire someone out for that to, especially if you have like a very specific way and how you want to lay things out. Sometimes it doesn't, for me, sometimes it's hard to translate that and there's a lot of technical things when it comes to creating a website. So that was my process. I had to really think about what I wanted to showcase, how I wanted to come across, uh, uh, how I wanted the style and the and the the, the theme colors for my website had to um, had to be similar to what my logo was and what my brand was. So those are the things that 
that was like my process um how do you get your leads specifically your first client my first like big girl client i uh, was actually my sister's boss at the time and she had mentioned to me that he made a note saying that he wanted to refresh the office and she had told him hey my sister's an interior designer she could probably help you and at that time uh, my sister had told me like hey you should reach out to my boss to see uh, what you can do for him and I was like I was a little bit hesitant not gonna lie because I was still like on the verge of like maybe starting my business maybe not um, and I also like in my head I was like it's a small project I don't think this is gonna really benefit me so kudos to my sister for pushing me to send that email because I almost didn't so I sent I sent him an email I was like hey I heard you are looking for a two designer you know let's let's schedule a time to meet and talk <clears throat> So I met with him and his wife at his home, um, and fast forward, they ended up hiring me. So I ended up designing his entire office space um, and his almost his entire house um, and his lake house. So you know, fast forward till now, I've designed so many things for him, and it goes to show that when you're starting out do not say no to any project even no matter how small it is because it could end up being um it could lead you to bigger and better things like i i would have never known that this client would have given me so much business um he was basically like the footprint of my clients he set so many like i i learned so much through my first client and i appreciated so much that he had trusted me and designing like all these things for him so um, that's basically how I got my first big client and to this day he's still a client so that that's just it's awesome so don't say no to any projects no matter how small we have a brief intermission I want to take a minute to review this adjustable bed base from FlexiSpot this bed base has a zero clearance which makes it possible to be placed directly onto your existing bed frame and with the touch of the remote, the head inclines from 0 to 60 degrees, the foot inclines from 0 to 35 degrees, and I must say that this base actually feels very stable and durable. I could tell that the, the motor and the materials is high quality. Um, and as far as assembling, it wasn't that hard. Uh, the only things I had to place in was the motor and basically plug in all the cords but you definitely need two people to move it because it was pretty pretty heavy so that just goes to show how good of a high quality it is like it was like really heavy that's when you know it's like good um and i also really love how they included these furniture pads for the legs we have wood floors so it's going to protect the floors from getting scratched and they also included um, a lot of these leg pieces and that allows you to kind of build up your bed base like determine how how you want it so I kind of like it low so I only used one leg but in the future if I decide to have it higher or I need a bed base that's higher um, I can always just kind of add it on there um, it also has these retainer bars which help keep the mattress in place and it stays on there pretty firm. I don't think I have come across an issue where I feel like I need to keep adjusting the, the mattress. It just holds it perfect in place. Um, and I actually had a past client who had an adjustable bed base and he would say like all these great things about it and we definitely had to make sure we incorporated it into the design and find a bed frame that worked with it. Um, but it was like really cool to experience it now and I could see why he bought it. Uh, I sometimes like to work on my bed so instead of piling all these pillows and being uncomfortable, I can now with a touch of a button adjust the header to my comfort level um, and if I need to keep my legs elevated for any reason I can also set the setting I was pretty surprised at how high the header can come up um, 
right here what I'm showing you is the max it almost feels like you're on a sofa so if you have a TV in front of your bed I feel like this would be the perfect setting for the bed base like you can literally just set the setting put the header up so you can watch TV comfortably and then when you're sleepy just press the button and you go back to flat um, obviously at the moment I don't have an actual bed frame but this can pretty much fit into any frame um, in the future if I decide to buy it. Um, and yeah, I definitely recommend this bed base to anybody that is looking to kind of have a mattress or a bed base that's versatile to their lifestyle. If you're interested to hear or to purchase this product, I will have the link in the description box below. Next question, how do you make your financial plan for your business? I'm going to tell you guys a little secret, um, but I haven't really kept up with this. I'm so bad at this part. I probably should. Actually, I did make like uh, an income goal list, but I tend to forget about it and I know it's really bad. So because of this question, I'm going to be determined on staying on track with this. So that's all I have to say about this question. How do you find trustworthy contractors slash builders for your projects? Um, honestly, for this one, it's all about trial and error. For me, um, I'm re really open to working with new people all the time, and I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. So I have like this list of like people do not work with, people to work with, and that's just how it is like you have to work with someone to know if they're a good fit for you if you like how they communicate if you like how they work um lately i've been adding more people on the do not hire ever again list which is kind of bad um and even like i worked with this like countertop installer that did a horrible job installing countertops for my clients and it was absolute nightmare um and he was actually referred to me by somebody that worked in like the the um the not the fabricator the, where, they, where you see the, the countertops, I'm blanking out, but somebody referred me to this countertop and salary and I was like, oh, like he must be really great. Like she said good things about him. I'm excited. It did not go well. Um, so even if somebody um, refers you and they say that they're, they're a good job, they do a good job, it can always end up bad um, or it could be just like a bad project. I don't know what it could be, but that's how you like pick and choose who you want to work with. You just have to see, you just have to experiment and, and give them a first try. I also research the company, look at reviews, see um, their socials. So that's how, that's how I find, that's how I weed people out, weed the good people out of the bad people. Like you just, you just have to see, you just have to give it a shot. Um, unfortunately, that's just how it is. How much do you think starting an interior design business can cost? Programs and everything. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you the essentials that I feel like you need to start an interior design business. And that is, well, these are the things you have to pay. Registrating your business name, getting a professional email, having a computer, an accounting software, and any design software that you feel like you need. Um, so don't feel like you have to get everything um, in order to start, like, I didn't get business cards till later. I didn't get my website up and running till later. So the I feel like these are some of like the basic essentials that you need to just start taking clients. Um, so just to let you guys know right off the bat, I personally paid a lawyer to handle all the legality to register my, my name, get my EIN. I paid $770 for it. That was back in 2020. Things could be a little bit more higher because of inflation but I learned well this is what you can do if you live in the state of Illinois um, to register and do it yourself it's $150 um, and I think the process takes like six to eight weeks for them to like look over it and approve but if you want to expedite it that's like a, an additional $100 so honestly I should have gone that route it doesn't sound that hard um, it actually sounds really easy to get a business social security your EIN that's free to get your resource certificate That's free. You don't have to pay for it um, So you could go with a lawyer or you could go uh, do it yourself um, So that's that so to register your business $150 Get a laptop or a computer to get a good laptop for the softwares that you use Probably gonna need to spend around a thousand dollars or maybe even more 
Um, if you already have one, then you're good. For software, I pay $299 um, a year for SketchUp. So if you need um, AutoCAD, I think for students it's free, but to have it personally, it's really expensive. Um, so keep that in mind. Every designer needs to have some sort of a software to space plan or to create drawings, construction drawings or something like that. Um, Adobe, if you feel like you need InDesign, Photoshop, um, or any of those programs, that is $54.99 a month. I need it because I also edit, I do YouTube videos, so I need Premiere Pro, I use InDesign, I use Photoshop, I use Lightroom. Um, so for me, I have to, I feel like I have to get it, but for, if you are just starting out and you need something to like create your presentation documents, use Canva. Canva is free. Um, if you want the pro version, that's you have to pay monthly, but it's not as much as $54 a month. Um, and Google email. You absolutely need a professional email. I pay $12 a month for uh, Google email. Um, but those I feel like, oh, and accounting software. So I use QuickBooks and they recently raised the price. I think it's like $80 a month. So yeah, that that's basically what I feel like you need to in order to start a business. Remember, don't feel like you have to get out of hand and get everything everything all at once. It's baby steps. What is your process as far as project management for your business and all your projects? Okay, so recently I've been like really keen into documenting everything. Not that I haven't before, but more to the T, more, more detail. So if you guys have seen my most recent Week in the Life video, I've been taking these construction management classes and the the teacher has been like really pounding in our head of like being organized um and documenting everything so what as far as like project management and managing my my projects like a few at once what i like to do my life depends on google calendar i put every single thing like any appointments any deliveries anything that i need to remind myself of, i put it on my google calendar when it comes to assigning myself tasks and deadlines, I use Asana. So Asana, I feel like I've talked about it so much, but it's a, they have an app and it's a project management uh, website. It's free, you don't have to pay for it. Of course, if you want advanced, you have to pay for it. But that is where I keep track of all my projects like and the phases and deadlines and I write down notes on there. I'll put like a little example of what I'm working on right now. Um, but that's how I pretty much keep myself really organized. So I just think you have to be really on top of everything, especially if you're juggling a few projects at once. Google Calendar, Asana, um, write a notebook or put in your notebook. Um, if you go on site visits with clients or even if it's like a small meeting, make sure to write down what happened and email it to them so that your clients know what, you, what was talked about. And if you forget like, oh my gosh, what did we talk about this in this day? You can look back and, and remember. Do you recommend one to go to interior design conferences? Have they been helpful? So I haven't gone to an interior design conference yet, but I have gone to uh, business conferences and I have found that they are really helpful. I get to network with a lot more people and um, just kind of build relationships with other people. And this, like I, like I, in my week in the life, I mentioned how I'm going to these weekly Wednesday networking meeting. Um, it's like a group of people, we meet every Wednesday. I would have never known about this meeting or been able to be a part of it had I not gone to this business conference because somebody, I met this lady at a business conference who she invited me to these Wednesday networking meetings. I hope I'm making sense. But essentially, it's, it's still good. Go to business conferences, um, go to business, networking events and meetings because you never know who you're gonna meet and you, you never know how they could essentially help you in your business how do you get clients when you work for yourself okay so for me um these are like the main things that get me clients is were uh, referrals so word of mouth um those are like really big um social media so instagram facebook uh and youtube a lot of clients have found me on youtube which i find is like pretty funny but pretty cool um, so those are the ways that I get uh, people through social media and word of mouth, the two powerful ones. Can you start your own business straight out of college or should one work for a firm first? 
Yeah, you can. You can start your business right after college. You don't have to wait. Um, but I personally would suggest working for a firm first. That way you get the ins and outs of how to run a business. You kind of test the waters if you like it. And you just learn a lot more. Try to work for a small company because that means you'll have a lot more responsibilities and that means you'll get a lot more insight on how it is to run a business. I think that will set you up better than trying to figure it all out unless you already know how to run a business or you know or uh, have a family member or someone that's been in the business field and they can like mentor and guide you um but other than that i would say work for firm would you accept interns yes i have actually had interns before i've had two that were like virtual interns and one that was um here right with me by my side um so i'm always open to giving students um an experience or give them experience um, for the resume um, and yeah just I've had people email me the resumes which is good like I put them on file so in case anything comes up like I can reach out to them um, and what else but yeah oh another thing is they're not gonna be paid unfortunately I wish I could pay you guys but not in the means to pay um, but yeah I'm always open to interns and giving students a chance to get some experience under the belt can we become an interior designer without a degree? Okay, this one's a little bit tricky, but I'm going to tell you, who am I to tell you that you can't be an interior designer without a degree? You guys know Karen Bond. She is a successful interior designer, entrepreneur. She went to uh, study interior design, but she dropped out to start her own business. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people decide um, then maybe college isn't their thing, you know, like, like I said, like, anything is possible. If you want to become an interior designer and work your way in the field, by all means do it. But I'm always going to highly recommend and suggest you get some sort of education, some type of schooling. I'm not saying you have to get your master's or your bachelor's. Like, get, get some sort of training. That way when you go in the workforce, you kind of know the process, you know some of the programs, you just, you have insight on how interior design is. Um, but yeah, that's just my thought on that. Um, and the last question is, did you start your own business after school or work for somebody first? So I worked for several firms after graduating college. Um, when I graduated college, I didn't really have plans on starting my business in the future, um, but after working for so many people, I'm like, you know what, it's time. It's time to start my own thing. Those are all the questions for today. Thank you for those who submitted your questions. I hope you guys found this helpful and useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.